everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kristana. If you are new here, hit the subscribe button. If you're not new here, welcome back friends and family. So if you can see, there's a little wall behind me. I just redid this. This is the wall that my coffee bar's on. My kitchen's right here, my dining room's right here. And I thought, why not do something with that wall? And so I have done the wall. If you guys didn't see on my Instagram, I just used some planking and some peel and stick wallpaper, pretty simple but we can't just leave this piece like this. So I need to paint this piece and we've got some missing knobs. I shipped this over from Germany and when it got here, there were things missing and cracked and all the things. So I am going to paint this. We're going to make it kind of colorful, make it match my wallpaper up here and just, you know, Christanaize it. So if you guys want to see that, stay here. The first thing I wanted to do on this piece was fix the doors. If you can see right here, they just kind of open. I do live in a super old farmhouse, so none of the floors are level, but you can see this door goes all the way back. And so we can't necessarily put the magnet on the door frame. We have to put it on the bottom. So that way when the door closes, it can line up. So sometimes with doors, they will sit just right on the outside of the opening, but this one goes in a little bit. So we're gonna to have to put the magnet on the bottom going in and that'll be just fine. So you can get these magnets at a hardware store. They're super easy to put in. You just need a drill. You're going to put your magnet part in and then that little face plate, you're gonna line that up, put it on the inside of the door. And that way when you close your doors, so you're gonna line it up right there. But once you close your doors, boom, they're going to stay closed, especially if you live in an old farmhouse. I am going to apply a gray primer to this. So this is the Pure Eco gray primer. I want to apply the primer because I'm going to be using some lighter colors. And when I use DIY paint, I know that you don't have to put a primer down, but I really, really love the blendability I get in being able to work the paint. The first thing I'm going to do on this piece is mist a little bit of water on the areas that I want to blend. So the color I am using on the outside is called cherry picked. And the reason why I'm using this on the outside is to create a shading effect. So this color is called cherry picked, but it is like a black cherry. And so this is going to be my base coat for my blending. So I'm doing a base blend on this piece. And like I said, I'm doing cherry picked in all the areas where I want it to be a little bit darker. Then what I'm going to do after I outline the darker areas is go over the center of these areas with French millinery, which is a nice dusty lavender color. You will want a brush for each of these colors and then I'm going to go in and mist the area and I'm going to take a clean, dry, neutral brush that I didn't use for either of these paint colors and I'm going to start going horizontal and I'm going to go vertical and what I'm doing is I'm working these colors together. This is a clay based paint so it is going to blend really, really nicely. What you're going to want to do though while you're doing this is take a paper towel and wipe off your brush every few minutes so that way you can get the excess paint off and that way when you are blending it's going to blend instead of muddying together but you can see how there's some darker areas and then there's some lighter areas you could just keep it like this if you wanted to so at any point in this process you could just stop so you could stop if you liked that I'm going to take Bohemian Blue though, and I'm gonna spray my brush, and I'm going to gently brush it on in all the areas so that I can add a little bit of a layering and blending into the purples with this Bohemian Blue. Again, if you don't like the blue, you could have just left the purple, but I like this Bohemian Blue color. I think it's beautiful. And so I'm blending this in and I am misting every so often with that. And then again, what I'm going to do is take a clean, dry, neutral brush and I'm going to mist all of the area and I'm going to go over everything. So I misted the area and now I'm going to go over it so that I can blend this into this clay paint. The thing about this clay paint is that it's going to reactivate once you put water on it. And so you can keep blending it. If you walked away for a few hours, you could still come back and do this and blend it in. So that's what I'm doing right here. My clean, dry, neutral brush. 
I'm just blending in a little bit more so that way we have a nicer blend. I allowed my first blend to dry for overnight and now what I'm going to do is start layering. If you don't want to layer, you don't have to, but what I'm doing right now is I'm taking old 57 and I'm lightly putting it on the areas that I want to layer it over top of. So I'm just kind of dipping my brush in and taking off as much as I can. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mist a little bit of water and I'm going to pull that old 57 over the original blend. Again, you want to let this sit for 24 hours or so before you go in and start doing this process and it'll allow for better layering and it'll allow for you to be able to spray the finish and not pull back to the primer. So old 57 is what I'm using right now. Again, I'm just layering it. I'm putting down the paint and then I'm misting it and then I'm pulling it over. So it's kind of a, it's a very thin layer of old 57 over our purples and over the Bohemian blue. The next color I'm using is liquid sunshine and I dipped my brush in the paint and I also sprayed the brush so that way it will pull over. And so now when I go over the old 57 with the liquid sunshine, we're going to create a green color. And so we've got yellows, we've got greens, we've got the blues, we've got purples. This is what I really love about this paint is that you can layer it and it creates other colors really easily. So you can see up in the top corner how it's starting to create a little bit of a green. The next color I'm going to use is cowgirl coral and I'm going to put that over and I'm just what the key to this blending and the key to the layering is to just pull the colors and kind of do like a dry brush over areas and these colors will layer over one another really, really nicely if you use a light hand. I will continue this on the entire piece and then we will go ahead and seal it. I wanna show you how to plug these holes. And so there was a hutch top on here. I wanted to plug it, so I'm going to put some wood glue in there and then I'm going to take a dowel where it's super, it's a tight fit to where I have to mallet in it in place. And then I'm gonna take a Japanese saw. This saw is meant to cut dowels to help you do this process. So you wanna gently go back and forth until you cut the dowel and you wanna make sure it's flush. And then once you have this cut, it's going to come off and then it is going to be filled. And you could use a wood filler over it if you want to, but if your dowel is the perfect size, you won't need to. I am sealing this piece in with DIY's big top so that way it is nice and protected and then it's going to richen all of the colors. I wanted to do a wash on the top of this to lighten it up. So I took my five inch random orbital by Surf Prep and I am just stripping down this entire top. I start with 100 grit and then I go to a 120 grit on the top. And on the sides, I use my three by four electric ray. And what I'm doing is just removing the old finish completely before I go in with my wash. When you do a wash, you want to take your paint and mix it with water to make it more of a watery paint. I'm using the color Sore by Country Chic. It is kind of a tannish color. And what I'm going to do is I am going to brush it on and then I'm going to allow it to sit for about 30 seconds. And then I'm going to wipe it back with a shop towel and it's going to give an effect of a whitewash. I didn't have a lighter stain and that's one of the reasons why I did this. Plus I wanted to see the wood grain through here. So what you want to do is you want to paint your wash mixture on and then you want to wipe it back and then allow it to fully dry before you seal it.
I allow my wash to dry for a few hours and then I'm gonna go in and I'm going to seal the top of it. See the beautiful world around, wanna see 